Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Yakar Kadash. Peace and salutations unto the Akim out there pushing this truth and sincerity. And double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who teach and rule well. Thank you, Wada. Wada for this truth. Um, we are to prophesy, man. We are to prophesy, you know. Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments is a, is a great start, you know, in getting into this into this truth, man. Um, but ultimately, man, we are to prophesy, right? And I'm gonna actually start with Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. It says, "And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not." I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, the so-called Jesus. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Right? Now we know prophecy, the definition of prophecy is uh, the foretelling of future events. The foretelling of future events. So to, for example, to say it's going to rain tomorrow, you know, which we have, uh, you know, the weather apps and whatnot. For, to say it's going to rain tomorrow and it ends up raining, you know, we prophesy that that's going to happen. That's just a small example. That's not of any significance, right? That's just an example. Um, but we are to prophesy, and that's where... The prophets come into play, right? The prophets, real prophets, prophesy, right? They tell you that things are going to happen. Things are going to take place. Just like in the Old Testament, all of the prophets, like Ezekiel, Jonah, you know, Isaiah, all of the all of the uh, the prophets of old, man, you know, they prophesy. The downfall of wicked kingdoms. If you truly believe in this book, you truly believe that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach walked the earth, that all of these are true events and they took place, and that the prophets prophesied downfalls of kingdoms, which happened, which happened, right? Which those the downfall of those kingdoms came, right? Then you got to understand that this is a book of prophecy. It has a history. It's a story, both past, present, and future. But you are to prophesy. Because it, like it says right here, Revelation 19 and 10. I'm going to read that last verse, or the last piece of the uh, verse. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Right? Now I want to go... To uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 15. It says, The Lord Yahweh, thy God or power, will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Right? You should listen unto, unto the people that prophesy, that are telling you, hey, this, this place, America, also known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures, is not going to last forever, man. This place is not going to be here forever, right? So, just like, and it makes total sense. I'm trying to put it in a way that makes sense into y'all, man. Um, prophets prophesy. All right? Real prophets are going to prophesy. They're going to tell you that, you know, the, the bad shit's about to take place, man. Because the Bible has it all laid out. And you're not going to hear this in any church, man. There are some churches. There are some churches. But really, like it says in Scripture, the Most High doesn't dwell in, in temples made with man's hands. You know? We are the temple, man. We are we are the, uh, the church, man. We're supposed to be the church, right? So that's what it boils down to, man. I just wanted to bring that out real quick before we get into it. So there's no confusion, right? Okay.
book of Joel, chapter 1, verse 15, it says, Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. We'll go jump to verse uh, or chapter two. It's the last one. It says, "Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand." Meaning, meaning, you know, basically the clock is ticking, man. It is nigh at hand. A day of darkness. And of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there had not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as golden, or Salaki, the land is as the garden of Eden before them. And behind them a desolate wilderness, yeah, and nothing shall escape them. So uh, that's that's talking about the day of the Lord, man. That uh, you know, the nukes, the ICBM missiles, the, which is intercontinental ballistic missiles. You know, uh, when you go when you go to John, man, and, and the vision that John had, or the dream that. You know, he saw, I believe, what was it, 200,000, thousand missiles in the sky? They blocking out the sun, making it look like it's nighttime. All right, it's going to be, uh, like like Scripture says, man, there has never been a day like it, man. There has never been a day like it, nor will there ever be again. All right. Like it says in verse 2, a day of darkness and of gloominess. And then we're going to jump to verse 10. It says, The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong and executeth his word. For the day of the Lord, Yahweh, is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Therefore also now saith the Lord, Yahweh, turn ye even to me, with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. So like it says, man, the day of the Lord is great, very terrible. And you, you see, um, like here in America, man, you know, they got the Make America Great slogan. The hats, the shirts, you know, Trump slogan, Make America Great. Now, people think that means great is somehow related to good, man. Are you good? No, I'm great, you know. But really, in actuality, uh, great just means in a, in a uh, let's get the definition real quick. I don't butcher it. Of an extent, amount, or intensity, intensity considerably above the normal or average. So it doesn't necessarily mean good, man. It just doesn't, right? Um, what's it on that, man? But you see the, you see the, uh, you see the point here, man. That the day of the Lord, man, is not a. Uh, it's not going to be all jolly and, um, you know. People are like wow, you know, angels coming down and stuff. Taking people up like this, in this like gentle fashion, you know, it's not gonna be like that, man. It's gonna be a day of fire, a day of wrath. It's the Most High. He's been, you know, he's basically got all this pent up wrath that he's gonna unleash, man. Like it says in Romans nine, what if uh, the Most High willing to show his wrath, uh, long suffer the vessels fitted for destruction, man, which are the other nations, man. You can't tell me Esau isn't the so-called white man, bro. Because at the end of the day, they came out of the uh, Caucasus Mountains, 
which that's where they, they get their term, name from, Caucasian, because they're from the Caucasus uh, region, right? The Caucasus Mountains. And anywhere they ever went throughout history, they, they, you know, worked their way in, you know, like scripture says, his words are smooth. But but uh, war was in his heart, man. Anywhere they ever gone, man, they've 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 uh, you know, raped, robbed, pillaged, and murdered, man, and took over. You know, they they don't they, they're not built like you, man. They don't have the same heart as you, all right. Which is why looking you know fast forward to today, they're in the position of power that they're in, man, because they've. They've just done that all throughout history, man. They and then they've washed white, uh, white Salakia, whitewashed, you know, history to the best of their abilities. They whitewashed, you know, what this Bible is really intended for, man. Um, you know, with Christianity and Catholicism, all the other doctrines like Mormon and you know, Jehovah's Witness, you name it, man. Whitewashed. This is not for everybody. If you actually read the Bible, this is not for everybody, man. Isaiah 28 tells you how to read it, man. There's only one way to re read it. And like, like Scripture says, man, the prophecy of this book is not a, any private interpretation. Man. There's only one way to read it, one way to truly understand it. All right? and, and one way to break it down, man. All right? Uh... Uh, Revelation 22, verse 7. This is Yahweh Shai speaking, so called Jesus Christ, all right? Red letter. Red letter, all right? It says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. So you'll see it all throughout the Bible, man. The prophecy of this book, man. To prophesy. Is to for the foretelling of future events, man. Which this which the Bible has laid out for, for us, man. The Most High is, is has laid it out for us, man. Right? So there's a lot going on in the world today, man. A lot going on in the world today, man. You know, we we barely got through the month of January, and uh, you know, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Already talk of World War Three, so many. I mean, countless amounts of earthquakes. Um, you know, uproars of the people throughout the world, man. Different, different countries, different continents. Uh, you know, weather, weather. Uh, the weather's just crazy. You know, and, and it's just getting worse and worse, man. We're seeing earthquakes. You know, of seven, eight, eight point oh magnitude, man. The, you know the likes of which we we never seen before, man. You know, and in, in such a in such a often basis as well, man. Might I add, you know. But these things were told unto us in this book, man. That these that these things were going to come, that they were going to happen, right? Uh, this is the book of Matthew, chapter twenty four, verse six. It says, "And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars." World War Three, man. Like scripture says, let's bring that out real quick before we get into that. Revelation 11 and 14. So anytime you're dealing with the book of Revelation, man, it's talking about the end, bro. It's talking about the end, right? Uh, it says the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Now, what does that mean, man? You had World War One, World War Two, right? The Second War, World War Two, is past. But the third war, the last war, Doomsday, Armageddon, the return of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, and the angels, the day of the Lord, man, 
is 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 coming soon after, man. It's coming quickly, right? So, like it says though, they shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, right? Don't think anything of it just yet, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, yet, right? The end is not yet, right? Because here at Great Millstone, you know, uh, we teach, which I'm not, I'm not. I'm not even a part of Great Millstone, but I do follow the doctrine of Great Millstone. Um, last I heard, they, they're not uh, taking any new people right now, which is understandable. Um, but it says, uh, oh yeah, here at Great Millstone, you know, we teach that the RFID chip is the mark of the beast, man. It's like, well, we're going to get into that in a minute, but. That that's gotta pass first, man. Before the before the third war comes, they're gonna implement the chip first, man. Which we already see it, you know, people people using it to start their cars, uh, people using it to clock into work and stuff in other in other countries and whatnot. It's it's already becoming mainstream, man. And like scripture says, it'll cause both small, great, or both small, yeah, both small and great, both rich and poor. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead right and you got uh elon musk talking about the brain chip man which people already got the chip in their right hand bro it's in their right hand too you know it don't get more uh more i guess you could say spooky than that you know but these are things were foretold and are coming to pass man all right so back back to uh Matthew 6, or actually we're at 7 now. It says, for nation, right, it says the, the there's going to be rumors of war. But don't be troubled yet. For all these things that, all these things I'm about to mention to you shall come to pass first. The end is not yet. It says, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And we see so much war, so much, uh, basically drama, so much, uh, you know, what did, uh, what did, uh, what did North Korea, what's his name, uh, Kim Jong Un, what did he say? Uh, come Christmas time, man, that he was gonna send America a Christmas gift, right? Everybody thinking he's gonna drop a missile. Most people pay no attention to it, man. But you'll hear all these things first, man. You know the talk of it, right? But it says, "For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places." Right? Uh, all types of uh, all types of uh, like people. People, so many homeless people, right? We got the homeless epidemic, you know, and they're even causing the homeless people that if they want to be able to get free food and whatnot, they got to get the chip, man. This is why it's important to be uh, aware of, of what what's going on in the world, man. It says all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all the nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right. It's, we're already getting there in the world, man. We're already getting there. Where everybody's so desensitized. You know, people say they they know what love is, but they really don't. You know, anytime anytime a brother like myself, anytime I, I come at somebody in a a different manner than coddling them and trying to protect their feelings, just telling them what it is, man, they think I'm they think I'm being hateful. You know, but there's such thing as tough love, man. There's such thing as trying to shake your brothers and sisters up, man. All right? It says, but he that shall endure unto the end. The same shall be saved, right? You got to endure it to the end, man. You got to endure it to the end, man. All right? Because our rest is not yet. Here, it's 
book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. It says, Behold, the days come, and this is going to happen, saith the Lord, Yahweh, our power, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord, Yahweh, thy shem, thy shah, man. It'll be a point in time where, you know, they might just shut down YouTube. We won't have this platform anymore. It might be a time where they'll just, you know, they're going to censor everything, man. But which they're already doing. They're already taking brothers' YouTube channels down, you know, their videos down, giving them strikes. You know, it's already, it's already here, man. It's already in the process, right? Which it ain't even about just YouTube, but. You know, that's that's an example, man. Right? The famine of the word, man. Where you won't be able to hear this anymore. Right? Uh, right. Revelation 13. And 16, it says, and he causes all, like I said, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Right. So that's talking about the chip, man. Cause like I just brought out, man, they're trying, they're making homeless people get them. They're not making them, but it's an option, man. And why wouldn't you want to get a chip so you can, you can have, you can eat, man. You can have a place to stay, man. You know. They're basically using it, using them as testing dummies, man. Right. But they don't realize, man, that once you get this chip, man, that's it. The most is not ever gonna. There's no place of repentance for you once you get that chip, man. So. Either, either it's going to come down to you dying for it, or you're going to give in and, and get that chip, man. You're going to either have the willpower, have the faith, or, or you're just going to, you know, you're going to be like the rest of the world, right? This is the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 1. It says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken but before by the holy prophets. So, all throughout the New Testament, which, you know, I brought out on Instagram, how the hell are you going to, you know, I don't want to lose the page, but, but how are you going to take away you know, 66, 70 percent of the Bible, man, the inspired word of God. How, how do you do that, man? Because all throughout New Testament, they're they're quoting the Old Testament. You know, they're talking about the holy prophets, just like in Second Peter we read right now, man. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, man. The people that prophesied, man, the holy prophets. Be mindful of it, right? And of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. Right, laughing, you know, scoffers laughing and, you know, not taking anything serious, right? Because they, they, have, they have it all figured out. They're proud, man, right? But like scripture says, pride cometh before destruction, right? Walking after their own lusts, right? Just following after their own lusts, right? Their own heart, whatever they believe, right? Rather than humbling themselves. And even first coming into this, man, let me, let me, my testimony real quick. I was skeptical, right? I was skeptical when I first came into this. But guess what, man? It, 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 like, it's like I knew that it made the most sense in the world, though, man. And through gaining this knowledge over time, man, it just goes to show... That I made the right decision, right? It said, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. 
For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of Yahweh the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water in the water, and in the water, Salakia, whereby the word that then was being overflowed by with water perished, talking about the days of Noah, man. Talking about the days of Noah, man, because they what what happened when the days of Noah, man? He went out there, he prophesied, he built that, built the ark a hundred years, man. That's a long time to wait, man. That's a that's a true man of faith right there, man. To wait upon it, you know? To really put in the work, man, and believe in something, right? But guess what? Just just like today, man, you have scoffers back then, you they were scoffing too, man. They was laughing. They was like, what? It ain't rained in, you know, how how however long, right? It ain't rained, but it's gonna have it's gonna be a flood? Come on now. <laughs> Where let's, let's get back to verse six, man. It says, "Whereby the word that then was, being overflowed with water, perished, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment, and perdition of ungodly men." Right. The day of judgment is going to be a day of fire, man. Like it says in a uh, what is it, uh, Hebrews, I believe. So like you, uh, if I'm wrong on that, but in Hebrews, it talks about the Lord being a consuming fire, man. Right. It says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Right. The Lord, Yahweh, is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Right. We, we don't see... You know, or most people don't see things happening right off back. It's not instant. So for them, it's just like, well, what's the point of believing it? I don't, if I don't see it, I don't believe it, right? That's how most people work, man. That's how they operate, right? Very uh, carnal in their way of thinking, right? It says, but the day of the Lord, or oh, Shalaki. Yeah, uh, verse 9, it says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to usward, not willing that any man should any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right, talking about Israel, that Israel should come to repentance. But the Most High already ordained that that's not going to happen, right? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Thief in the night. It's going to come before you know it, man. Just like we bring up, I bring up that. Uh, it's not a metaphor. I just bring up all the time how, you know, right today you could look back on your life and be like, man, it felt like I was just, you know, just a youngin', man. I was just in school, you know. All these years later, you know, look where I'm at. But most people, they don't, they look forward. They, I mean, well, you want to look forward too, but what I mean by that is most people look forward in the sense of, you know, I got all this time, right? I got all this time, but then when you get to that point to where you're at today, you look back and it just flew by, man. It just flew by. So the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Talking about that fire, man. Talking about those nukes, man. And the earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. So, destruction is coming unto this place, man. Prophets prophesy, man. All right, destruction is coming unto this place. Is it Romans 7? All right, this is the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 7 through 8. It says, What then? Israel hath not attained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath attained it. It says, and the rest were blinded. Verse 8, according as it is written, the Most High hath given them the spirit of slumber. See, this is what I was telling the brother, man. The Most High controls both sides, both good and evil. You don't need to fear Satan. You need to fear the Most High. If the Most High was all loving, there would be no reason to fear him, man. 
You know, if he was all loving, he would never do any, 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 he would never cast any judgment onto you, man. Because he's all loving, right? That's what it would be, right? But he's given them the spirit of slumber. But the, see, he controls both sides, man. He could give, put on you spirits that are going to awaken you, that are going to let you see in a clear, uh, in a clear way, you know, have a clear uh, vision, right? Or you're going to put spirits on you that are going to give you, that are going to keep you sleep, man. What they say in, in today's world, man, stay woke, you know. I just did a video, you say you woke, but can you stay awake, man? Right? And the brother brought out in the group chat, man, that, you know, you basically got two wolves inside of you. And whichever one you feed the most, whether that be the spiritual wolf, you know, the wolf that's dealing with scripture, you know, that's uh that that the most high is gonna deal with basically, or you're gonna you're gonna feed the other wolf that, you know, into all this other shit, smoking weed, getting drunk, partying, you know, doing all the things that the world does, right? One's gonna be stronger than the other, man. Cause you're gonna you're gonna be feeding one more than you feed the other, right? But it is about maintaining a balance. We're not saying you can't have fun. You, you can't indulge in your own pleasures, um, you know, from time to time. We're not saying, well, we are saying don't smoke weed, but you could drink alcohol, man. You could drink wine from time to time. Don't overdo it, of course, but it's a balance, man. It's simple, right? Um, but back to the topic, man. The Most High has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day, right? Even unto this day, man. Go back to, uh, what is it, Daniel 12? Well, the Most High talking about seal up the book, man. You know? And then and, and in the end days that knowledge shall be increased, man. People will come back to this understanding. I'm going to lift the veil, basically, is what the Most High said. All right, and now we're going to jump up to verse uh, 25 through 26, 27. It says, For I will not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel unto the fullness of the, the Gentiles be come in. And that word Gentile, it has two meanings in the scripture. It could either mean... Um, you know, people of another nation or the Israelites scattered amongst the other nations, right? At verse 26, and it says, And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away the ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins, man. Right? So the new covenant... It's been implemented, man, but but the what scripture talks about, you know, when the Mo, when the Most High says he's gonna put put the uh, put the law in our inward parts, man, and we'll be perfect. We won't be able to sin, man. That's talking about the kingdom to come, man. This place right here, this place we're in, is through, man. This is not your rest, right? All right, we're gonna jump back to Matthew. And like scripture says, not all of Israel is Israel, man. Not every, like this, like the brother said in the video, man. I seen a video not too long ago. Not every brother is a brother, and not every other is an other. This isn't a skin complexion thing, in a sense. It kind of is, but it ain't, man. You know, this is a spiritual thing, you know. It's a general rule of thumb, man, not an not the exception, right? That the the Israelites are, are the so called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's a general rule of thumb, man. However, there are exceptions, just like with anything, man. That somebody could be looking just, you know, straight white or could look Asian, you know. The confusion of faces, in other words, but this resonates with them, you know. That this resonates with them, you know. They just they. This is just something that uh, you know, that clicks with them, man. Right. Whereas you could tell if someone is just so disgusted by this truth, so turned off by it, 
but they, they're probably not, it's probably not for them, you know. They could come around, and most I could take that spirit up out of them, but, you know, that's up to, that's up to the Heavenly Father, who knows, right? All right, uh, this is Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the king, kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then the mo and then what I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, yea that work iniquity. All right, so the most high he's only dealing with certain people, man. He's only dealing with certain people, man. And it's more than just having faith, man. It's more than just the law, statutes, and commandments. A lot, like, to, like I brought out in the other video, man, to whom much is given, much is required, man. There's much required of you, man. With great power comes great responsibility. No Peter Parker. You know, more like uh, <laughs> Miles Morales, man. <laughs> uh, you know, I want to get a... Uh, Zephaniah 1 and 18. And we're going to read 1 and 18, and then we're going to read all the way through chapter 2, verse 2. It says, Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord, or Tzalaki, in the day of Yahweh's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all of them that dwell in the land. Gather yourselves together. Yeah, gather together, O nation not desired. Talking about the Israelites scattered abroad, man, because truth be told, the, the nations they don't want us, man. They don't they don't want us around, man. If 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 the so called whites in America could have it to where it's only whites in America, they have it that way. You know, majority at least, right? Um it's like, like how Muhammad Ali said, man, if I see 10,000 uh, uh, rattlesnakes, <laughs> snatter, rattlesnakes charging at me, you know, I got the door open, and a thousand of them mean good, am I going to sit there and just try to let the thousand in and do my best to keep the, the other 9,000 out? No, I'm shutting the door, man. All right? So that's what, that's what it is, man. Like I said, general rule of thumb, not the exception, right? Uh, it says, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the shaft, before the fierce anger of the Lord Yahweh come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Right, so gather together, come together under the same truth, under this one doctrine, you know, because <laughs> the day of the Lord is, is nigh at hand, man, like we just read. Yeah, this that's the point, man. That this place is done, man. We're prophesying the downfall of this wicked kingdom known as America, known as Britain, known as you know the you know the UK, um, all the all the Edomite nations, man. Russia, they're all rising up against one another, and you know China and and, and the other nations included, man. But these are the main ones, man. These are the powerhouses, right? And and a time is gonna come. Well, World War Three is here, and that's it, man. That's it, all right? So this is, uh, I want to finish with this. This is uh, Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 13, verse, verse 14. It says, for here have we no continuing city, right? This place is done, man. But we seek one to come. We're looking forward to this, man. We're hopeful for what's going to come, man. You know, Lord willing, uh, the sincere brothers out there be a part of that number, you know? But we, uh, that's what we're looking forward to, man. That's when our rest will truly be, you know. That's when we'll really get to enjoy ourselves, man. You know, that's when we'll have, I mean, we've seen these movies like Thor, uh, streets and buildings and castles, uh, mansions basically made of gold, made of different stones, you know. Like scripture says, man. 
you if you get to the kingdom of heaven, man, he's going to grant you your heart's desire. This is why it's important to be a living sacrifice this go around, man. Because, like I said, man, before you know it, your your time here will be done, man. Are you going to look back and be like, damn, I put in all that work and effort, you know. All right, are you going to step into the gates, man, in other words? Or are you going to hold your head in shame and be like, damn, that was a lot of time wasted. Right? But I hope this video was edifying, you know. Uh, I hope uh, I hope y'all learned something, you know. Uh, with that, I want to say, Kal Halayim, La Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Lakal Kadash. Peace and salutations, and to the Akim out there pushing his truth and sincerity, and double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who teach and rule well. Shalom.